Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and one of the pillars of open source graphics just had a major update and that is Inkscape. What you see in front of you, this is Inkscape 1.3 which was just released over the weekend. If you've never experienced Inkscape before, first off it is free and open source available on Windows, Mac and Linux and this is a vector graphics based application. Basically everything you see in front of you, this is drawn entirely using math. Uh, so basically each thing here is a primitive shape. So everything here is a shape, everything in the background is a shape, it is built up of compound shape objects. Uh, and the nice thing about this kind of approach is you can scale in infinitely, as you'll see here, and your lines stay super crisp. So if you're using this for game art, uh, you can dump out your art in multiple different resolutions, uh, and it's going to look just as good, at, regardless to what uh, you know depth or pixel art level that you drew it at. Because with vectors, you're drawing it using math, and math scales perfectly. So what exactly is new in the Inkscape 1.3 release? Well, there's two new features here that I absolutely love. And we're going to show you those hands-on and then we'll get into the actual um, release notes about it. The other thing I would say is it seems a little bit more performant. I've always had some issues with Inkscape. Uh, the performance has never been amazing for me. Uh, and this one definitely seems a little bit better. So we've got some improvements here. We've got new snapping tools, for example. But the two things that I like the best, I will illustrate right now. So let's pop up a new window right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw some shapes. So we're going to draw this circle. So we're going to draw this circle over here. We're going to draw another circle over here. We're going to draw another circle over here. We're going to draw a little circle over here. We're going to draw a circle over here. We're going to draw a circle over here. And finally, we will draw a circle over here. And just to be wild, let's draw a square in here as well. So that is nothing special. What the hell is going on here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab everything I just drew, and we are going to showcase the new shape builder. Now, if you are using... Um, it, basically this to draw any kind of art out of shapes. This one is going to be a huge time saver. Because basically what you can do is you can draw like a dog's breakfast of what I just drew right here. And you can just go through here and pick the shapes that you actually want to be part of your final profile. So let's say I want this guy, 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 that guy, and that guy. That is my shape. I go ahead and apply, and that is our new shape. Shape Builder is going to make certain things just so much faster to create. So when you're creating these raw primitive shapes inside of Inkscape, Shape Builder is definitely going to speed that process up. Now, this is considered new. You may run into some problems with it. There's also some control configurations for it. Um, so you can do fine-tune control. You can hold down a modifier key and have it uh, extru or ex um, subtract an item from your selection, etc. But as you can see, the Shape Builder is going to make making certain shapes just so much faster. I love that new feature. The other thing that we've got going on here is I come up here to the layers and uh, object settings right here, and we'll click on this guy over here. And what you're going to now notice is you have new controls over here for how things will render. Um, so your opacity and your blend modes can be controlled right here in the layers and options uh, objects menu. This is something you're going to use a whole lot. So those are the two highlight features that I really liked in it, but there's a lot more here. So let's jump over into the release notes. All right, so here we are in the Inkscape 1.3 release notes. And you can see right off the hop, improved performance is one of the features there. And yeah, I do feel it in this particular release. Obviously, some people say that they don't have any performance issues. So it might be a more of a machine-based thing. I'm not entirely certain. But lots of lovely new things to feature here. Um, so this is this version is squarely focused on helping users get organized and work more efficiently with our free and open source vector editing software. We saw the shape builder in action. Again, you can quickly draw these just raw primitives and then just kind of drag them in and create these new compound shapes immediately. It does to preserve the color of it does sorry preserve the color of the original shapes while you're doing it. You basically just click and drag through to create objects retain the original color. Shortcuts for this include shift for quickly uh, switching between adding and subtracting parts. Uh, it is pretty new, so if you have some issues, you'll know about them. Uh, when you use it with curved shapes, you end up with paths with a larger number of nodes. If you do not need to be that precise, use Control L or the Simplify LPE uh, to simplify the results. We also have document resource dialog changes here. So uh, if you like to efficiently organize your Inkscape documents, this tool is for you. There are times where being able to quickly see an overview of elements is key when sharing a file for commercial printing, for instance. It's a checklist of resources contained in your document, including patterns, filters, uh, colors, fonts, symbols, and so on. By the way, on the topic of patterns, we're going to have some news there as well. Uh, font collections, so uh, still an 
Organizing path, this new button helps those who wrestle with many fonts to categorize them by collections. Quickly and easy identify which fonts you want to grab for which contract or clients um, or custom project. You can organize them by style, cursive, funny, sans serif, etc. Uh, there's a new icon to help you find those connections. As I mentioned, patterns got some love. There is a new um basically pattern creation tool. So not only do you have access to a funky and practical library of patterns, there is a new pattern editor that enables you to adjust a pattern. Uh, in addition to being very useful, it's also fun to explore, having fun play with shapes, sizes, rotation uh, with these repeats, uh, change color for your version of a pattern and adapt the offset too. I don't use patterns much, I don't really know why, but if you do, you're definitely going to love this new tool. As I mentioned earlier, there's the layer and objects dialog, so you can now set opacity and blend modes in the layer and objects dialog. This is something you do a hell of a lot when you're working with vectors. For example, um, you overlay another vector graphic to do like shadowing or something, and you might set it to uh, darken or whatever, and then have its opacity lowered down. It's now quick and easy to do so. There's also search is back, so you can create and filter by name. Improved objects dialog allows you to once more use sliders to adjust the opacity or blending mode of a layer and drag multiple objects to hide or lock them in a single swipe. Uh, so there's now a persistent snapping bar. You can see it in action up here. So if you're using the snapping features, you can quickly adjust the settings via it. Uh, page and margin bleed. So when you're prepping your document for print, you uh, now have more control over margins and bleed. Uh, spot the new round handles in the middle of the page border. Simply click and drag to set your margins. Uh, oh yeah, this is another really nice one. Uh, and it's very simple to use. So let's go on back over here. So let's go here into... Um, Select our shape, go into uh, handle mode right here. What am I doing? Oh, so wrong mode. All right, so here we are in our thing. Now what you can do is hold down the Alt key and you can actually use this new lasso select. I actually like this as well. This is actually one of the big new features that I forgot to showcase, but I think that one is a huge deal. So if you're not just doing, you know, rectangle select, shift clicking and such, you now can again hold down Alt and do a lasso select, and I believe I can hold down shift and add to it like so. So that's going to make some people's time a whole lot more efficient. That is definitely a nice new feature here. Uh, so that lasso select is there. Uh, some improvements to the live path effects dialog. I think live path effects were added in the last version. Uh, so they revamped the dialog. Um, an overview of your stack unfolded quicker, a way to add LPE to your work, all while making it easier to see what you've got selected. Uh, PDF importer was rewritten. So if you're importing PDFs, you're going to appreciate that. No deletion logic was changed. So this is Inkscape guessing the desired result when deleted nodes. Um, let's see what it actually does here. So delete those. And yeah, okay. So when you're deleting out nodes, it's going to do a more logical job of handling them. Let's actually see what it does in this live example. Ah, so it smooths it out and figures it out. Yeah, it's a nicer algorithm on the whole. I actually do like that one. Uh, pinned colors in the palette. Uh, so you can now pin them in on the left-hand side. You can see right here, those were pinned. So the colors that you use a lot, you will like. Um, filter editor overhaul here. And that is about the extent of it. So there's full-blown release notes if you want to get in. A uh, lot more detail here about all the very smaller things that changed here. I'm not going to go into anywhere close to that level of detail with this. I just kind of wanted to focus the highlights um, here. Again, I do think that there were some really nice new tools here. I love this new shape builder available via this guy right here. I love the alt select options there. And I love the fact that you can now change those modes right here, uh, right, this guy right here, so you can change the opacity and blend modes right there in the layers in object editor. Those three things alone are going to be huge time savers, especially for people using Inkscape for game art. Um, again, I do like the idea of color pinning down here. That's going to be a nice time saver as well. So there's a lot to like in this release, to be honest. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Inkscape 1.3. What do you think? Also, let me know if you try it out. Is the performance better for you as well? Uh, so yeah, that's it. Inkscape 1.3, a uh, pretty nice step forward, I would say. What do you think of this release? Let me know. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.